Hello, um, that was uh, Shackleton um, once again just deciding he wanted to um, be part of the on-screen video. So I'm continuing my discussion on wet bulb temperatures and heat waves and what we can do about it or how they affect the human body. Um, so basically, um, I have to adjust my camera a bit. So if you Google National Weather Service wet bulb globe temperature. This is an excellent site. Now there are some uh, small glitches with it because, uh, but the idea is that you go and click on the map of a location and the, it gives you the month and the day and the latitude, okay? And the maximum forecast temperature for that day the dew point, relative humidity, wind speed, cloud cover, and it calculates the heat index, okay, which just depends on generally the temperature and the relative humidity. And then it calculates the wet bulb temperature, but that's using um, the wet bulb temperature, um, wet bulb global temperature uses these other factors to calculate it. It uses you know, you can, the temperature and relative humidity or temperature and dew point give you, you know, equivalent information, but then it adds the wind speed and it adds the cloud cover to calculate this index. Um, so you can click on a location, for example, and, uh, but it's not quite working because, well, yeah, I guess the forecast temperature is changing, but it doesn't change that much. I mean, if I go right along a coastline, yeah, it, it is changing, okay. So it's working right now. So what you can do is, um, you know, the, the key thing is what the wet bulb temperature is 35 Celsius or that's 71, um, that's 95 Fahrenheit, 100% humidity is how you define wet bulb temperature. The temperature at which the humidity of that parcel of air would be uh, 100%. And when this reaches 95, then it's basically uninhabitable. So let's switch over to some other parts of the world. Let's go over to, to India, for example, and click here. Um, and this is not working, right? So like it says 76, come on, it's not. Okay, so let's uh, put it in by hand. Once it, I mean, it does work for the US, it seems, but let's, so we're going to temperatures of 50 degrees um, Celsius which is multiplied by nine fifths is 90 at 32, 122. So 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And if the relative humidity was 12%, um, then that's 95. Okay, let's change the relative humidity. Okay, here we go. So. If the well, that we saw that it was three percent on Earth Null School or something, so that gives a wet bulb of eighty-eight Fahrenheit. So if we go up, we don't have to go up much higher. We go up to twelve percent, and we get a ninety-five Fahrenheit wet bulb temperature, the limit of survivability. So we don't have to go up much higher. You know, it's three percent there. So the concern, like I said in the previous video, is if we're near a water body like the ocean, and that temperature of that water body, whether it be the ocean or a shallow lake near you, when that reaches 35 Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit, then the breeze from that uh, body of water coming on shore will have the wet bulb that is basically fatal within six to eight hours of being outside. So when the water temperature reaches those levels and those large parts of the coastline in those regions where it happens, people will start dropping like flies and we have a big problem. Um, obviously, you know, areas will be uninhabitable. Okay, so I think people will need to wear monitors, a simple electronic device that measures temperature and relative humidity and gives you, calculates the wet bulb and displays it and has an alarm going off to alert authorities um, if, if it's, uh, you know, if you're in that area for a certain length of time, and this would be so that people, you know, living in high rises or living in cities where the heat island raises the temperature a lot more. Remember, local temperature is going to change a lot in a region. Um, 
you know, in a city with heat island effect. And also, you know, if you're in a high rise building and there's no air conditioning, the heat rises all up to the top. Remember, you know, these heat waves, you know, killed 70,000 people in Europe in 2003. You know, I think 40 or 50 percent, 40 or 50,000 were in France. And uh, there was a Chicago heat wave that killed lots of people. It's very important that people have cooling centers to go to, but they need to be alerted because your mind stops working. It really starts slowing down as you go through heat exhaustion, you know, and you don't function properly. You know, you'll just sort of lay there comatose uh, when you have heat exhaustion and then, and then you die of heat stroke. You know, you fall asleep maybe and then that's it. You're gone. Okay, so these deaths are avoidable completely if we have a body sensor um, that would alert authorities, for example, okay, you got to go, this person in this place is, uh, you know, about to die from, from uh, this, this uh, wet bulb and, uh, you know, get them out, right? It could save all kinds of lives. So, uh, you know, please uh, consider, uh, you know, if you make your billion dollars, if you run with this idea, then please consider a, a, small, a donation to my, to my website. Okay, so... What else do we have from this? Um, there's lots of ways to calculate heat index, and I'll talk about some of those in, in a bit. But heat, heat index is it's measured in the shade. It uses temperature and relative humidity. That's it. The wet bulb uh, global temperature, it's measured in the sun. It uses temperature, relative humidity, but it also uses wind. Okay, if there's wind, that carries some heat away from your body, convective cooling. Um, if there's cloud cover, that's going to mean, you know, you get much less direct sunlight. And the sun angle, the, the, the more the sun is closest to the, when the sun's closest to the zenith up ahead of you, it's the, light, the rays of light are traveling through much less atmosphere and the, the intensity will be much stronger. You know, is the sun setting or rising? It's coming through a lot more atmosphere, which is absorbing some of the energy. So it's going to be a lot, have a lot less impact. Okay, so those conditions are all taken into account for wet bulb global temperature. And then based on the values of wet bulb global temperature, um, you know, 80 to 85, it tells you, you know, your body gets stressed if you're working or exercising in direct sunlight after 45 minutes. It, take, it tells you what to do. Take 15 minutes of breaks each hour. Uh, if it's 80 to 80, 85 to 88, uh, 30 minutes of working and then 30 minutes of break, 88 to 90, 20 minutes of working, 40 minutes of break, greater than 90, you can't, you're, you're basically stressed in 15 minutes. You know, you can work, this is, uh, this is, and remember when we get 95, you basically can't be outside working at all. Okay, so, so, uh, you know, you can play around with these numbers, so, um, you know, let's say we're at, uh, you know, uh, the forecast maximum is, is uh, you know, 100, like you can see the different colors, let's say at 105, 105, say, relative humidity 19, what do we have to go up to? Look at the lowest number when that reaches 95. Doesn't, it never reaches 95, how come? Huh? I don't know. That's bizarre. There, there is some issues with this. Oh, there we go. Ninety-five, hundred and eight, uh, and we can reach ninety-five here. Let, what? Hundred and five. Ninety-four. Yeah, this is isn't seems a bit weird. Doesn't seem right to me saying you can never reach uh, the wet bulb temperature, that condition. Okay, 96. Okay, so anyway, play around with it. It does give a warning here that it's uh, for, uh, not for operational use, prototype under development. So I think the idea is fantastic. You'll be able to click on any part of the world and you'll be able to, it tells you what the forecast is on, you know, set the date, the month and the day, and it will tell you what the wet bulb global temperature is and basically the conditions and what you have to do to present it. This data could be programmed into a little device that you wear and it would do wonders for reducing fatalities from, from heat stroke, heat exhaustion. Okay, so um, 
let's have a look at what's going on now. So this is an interesting, you know, under, here's somebody who posted the temperature is expected to cross 68 in Kuwait. Now, a real temperature, I don't know, but this is an interesting video and let's just have a quick look at it. Let's start at the beginning. So I just want to play this and talk about it. So Kuwait recorded the highest temperature on June 8th. 63 degrees Celsius under direct sunlight, 52.2 in the shade, okay, causing the death of at least two expats. Well, no surprise, it's expats, okay. Temperatures are skyrocketing, Saudi Arabia crossing 55. I mean, these are, these are just unbelievable temperatures. Our body's not designed for this sort of stuff, okay. Um, so lots of the countries there, um, 68 in Kuwait. Well, the camels would look okay. Um, and now India became the hottest place in the world, reaching 47.8. And Delhi. See, the problem is, is the heat island effect. You know, in Delhi, you know, lots of places uh, within would be much, much warmer. Okay, so... This is uh, some of the stuff I've been look, posting on Facebook, and if you, this you know looks like a fantastic drone here, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some of this stuff, and you know I should start doing some of my videos from from drones um, to mix it up a bit. You know, just normal stuff here. They found Agent Orange and barrels in the bottom of a lake, and Lake Ontario reached record heights, and. Dallas swamped by a massive rain bomb. This is uh, unbelievable, too. Have a look at this. Like, what's going on? It's like Independence Day. Looks like the city is being swallowed up. So, you know, rain is just, you know, the drops are so big, the rain's just falling out of the sky like a waterfall. You know, welcome to the, to the new climate. It's not the new norm, right? We're passing through, we're on the vertical curve going up to a much warmer world. So there's no new normal at any time. What the heck? Is that in a bus? Well, that's not good. That can't be good. Uh, maybe get out of the bus. I don't know. No, just tweet it. You know, it's more fun, right? You could, maybe you get a viral bit, video as the water's rising, as long as you know you can get out. Um, okay, well, yeah, the, it's like a fire hose connected um, the surface to the sky and uh, just flooded everything. You know, uh, that's pretty phenomenal video. Massive rain bomb. If we need a sound effect, it would be a whoosh or a crashing wave, it says. You know, that's a textbook microburst. So the microburst, you know, the, the heavy rain, the, the air literally, it's like a giant rain bomb, a microburst, powerful area of sinking air, huge raindrops, carried stuff down incredibly fast, um, wind speeds in excess of 100 mile an hour, you know, all the trees get knocked out and they all point away from the center as opposed to a, a tornado and so on. I mean, this is just phenomenal. This is like <laughs> incredible. It's crazy. Okay, so let's go and look at uh, another feedback that's really bad. And this is, uh, you know, Indian cities are simmering in their own waste heat. Okay, and this is another great uh, example of how, you know, the rich survive and, and the um, poor get decimated. And basically, if you're rich enough in India to have air conditioning, your air conditioning is running 24-7 24 because it's just too hot outside. So the air condition, the outlet of the air conditioner is heating the outside air, making it even hotter and hotter. So Delhi's summers and monsoons are hotter by 3.6 Celsius and 3.3 Celsius on the heat index. So the summers by 3.6, the monsoons by 3.3. Now heat index like is calculable many different ways, but they're showing the average heat index um, in the summer and monsoons and how it's increasing over time the number of extreme danger heat index days in the summer and the monsoon over time so definitely ramping up in the wrong direction and i'll 